Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, that's one of the oldest rivalries in college football. One of the oldest rivalries in baseball. Yankees, Red Sox, and Ahmed. I, I don't know if people know that maybe people recognize you uh, from the Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris Sims. Chris Sims is a lot of things. I love him. Uh, he's our brother, but he's a Yankees fan. And I had the most fun last night. I just had such a good time last night just texting with him from the first inning until I just decided to let up. Yeah. I decided to let up because yeah. it was it was becoming bullying. You felt bad. It you was, started it to was, actually it, feel bad about <laughs> talking about the I Yankees. Felt bad for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think tell me if you disagree. I know this is wild uh, for people around the country to hear me say something like this, that the Red Sox are now underdogs. The Red Sox are underdogs. Red Sox Yankees yeah. for a while in the early 2000s. It was the arms race. It was unfair in baseball. The Yankees would spend millions and millions and millions and millions, you know, well over 200 million. The Red Sox would be right there at 190 million, 180 million. Yeah. I mean, they just, the, the payrolls were bloated. The Yankees had stars Jeter and A Rod and Mariano. Uh, the Red Sox had stars Big Poppy and Manny and Pedro, and it was just excessive. And so I, I'm, I'm sure if you are outside of the Northeast Corridor, you really got tired of seeing these teams go back and forth. They were always on Sunday Night Baseball. Uh, both fan bases, can I say respectfully, a little obnoxious. I know, a little obnoxious. <laughs> A little self-indulgent, yeah, sure. self-aware. That's very self-aware there, Michael. Well done. That is self-aware. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this. Uh, the Red Sox are not the best team in baseball, not the second best team, not the third best team. They will be fortunate if they're able to advance past the Tampa Bay Rays, who I think are the second best team in baseball after the Dodgers. So is it is it fair to say that the Red Sox is cute, little, embraceable, high payroll team? They are is now they, an underdog in no, baseball. You're not no, buying it. No, I, no, I'm not personally buying that. You can sell it. I'm not. I'm not buying it. It's funny. I, I work with some people here at uh, at NBC Sports. We're based out of, out of Connecticut, so there are some people that come from the New York area, some people that grew up in the in the Boston area, and there are some people that grew up in the Boston area who are in their what late 20s or early 30s who have never known the kind of you know Boston fandom that that I grew up with and that you grew up with. It was like I went to college at Syracuse with people who are Boston fans who never tasted any success in any of the major sports. And so <laughs> at that point, Michael, I would say, yes, Boston, no matter what, if, if you're a fan of the Bruins, you know, Patriots, really, uh, the Celtics, the Celtics had their success, of course, but, but the Red Sox, no. I was like, yes, underdog. They lost it. They ruined it. Tom Brady went in there. The Boston Red Sox, with their success and high payroll, they blew it. So they will never be underdogs again. But I, I, I think, you know, I can still look at this team and say it's a fun team to root for. Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, you know, they're not household names maybe yet, but they deserve to be. They're right. really good players. And it wasn't like the Yankees lost this game. Last night, of course, all the headlines are Garrett Cole, $324 million. He blew it. Um, you know, they sent him from third there. Should they not have done that? The third base coach. But but the Boston Red sent Sox, they're a first. good team. Sent him from first. Sent You're right. From first, You're right. What would you think of that? What did you think of both and, of those? And, you know, there was, there was what, a third base coach on the Red Sox side, too, that it, it worked out. He's Xander Bogart scored, but a little dicey. Okay, what, have I th what did I think of it? Let me see if I yeah. can find um, some eloquent words. That was really stupid. Okay. <laughs> that was really stupid. In that situation, look, the starter, the Boston starter, Nathan Ovaldi, had thrown 71 pitches, five and a third. They got him out of the game. Okay, so now they get the starter out of the game, who had been doing very well, gave up a home run, sure, but got him out. Starter's out. The ball is scalded, a, a scalded single right after that. So that tells you, I, I guess, Ryan Brazier, who, my point exactly, a reliever that you're not really afraid of. That's, that's who was on the mound for the Red Sox. The momentum was shifting in that game. It was still only three to one. You could have uh, guys on base, only one out. You're in pretty good shape. Why in the world would you send who? Ricky Henderson? No, no. Aaron Judge. Yeah. He's <laughs> fast. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is fast. He's deceptively, he's very quick. 
Yeah, deceptively. You know what that means? He probably is not a stop and start guy. He probably yeah. just doesn't go boom out of the blocks. Yeah. If this, if we were talking about uh, the hundred meters, you know, he's a guy out of the blocks. He's probably in last place, and then those a long strides. He he picks it up in the final, you know, twenty meters, I guess. But the third base coach gave him a late signal. Yeah. He's like rounding second, no signal. Then all of a sudden, this frantic come, 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 and he was out at the plate by a mile. And I think that changed the game. The Red Sox tacked on another run there to make it four to one right shortly after that. Then a two run, uh, a two run double from Alex Verdugo uh, made it six to one. Yankees hit a meaningless home run in the ninth inning, six to two. Yankees go home, Red Sox advance uh, to the uh, uh, ALDS. And I want to ask you do you think this is. I, do you think this is rare in, in the sense that, you know, Red Sox Yankees, you, you don't find a lot of this in the in this corporate environment in, in professional sports. You don't find a lot of just raw, nasty rivalries, right? Do you think this is a uh, this, is this the last of that? You know, like there are only a couple of maybe Giants Dodgers is still like that. Um, Cubs Cardinals. I don't think yeah. it was ever that I may be speaking out of turn. It's Midwestern. It's nice. You're right. Right. Yeah, the, you don't have that, you don't have that hatred. You don't want to see the other side die or anything bad happen to it. No, Raiders yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. 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 Raiders Chiefs. You know, anyone versus Tom Brady, it seems like Raiders have a, have that thing with the, the tuck but rule. Um, no, it, just... it is. And I think the and, and the thing is that like that's what makes sports fun. Right. Is there's this on the field like in real life. We're not supposed to hate. At least we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to hate the other person. We're not. We're supposed to get along. Um, but in sports, I know, I know, you're right. But in sports, <laughs> that's supposed to be okay, right? right? And, and it really has been more difficult as you've gone on. A lot of great things have come from player movement, obviously, right? Free agency. It's been more fair to the players. They've been getting paid. They're not stuck in one franchise for their whole careers. But at the same time, you do lose something. And I think you lose kind of that, that rivalry. We've seen players go between the Red Sox and, and, uh, and the Yankees um, here in recent years, the Giants and the Dodgers. So... I, I hope we hold on to it. I hope we, it's always a thing when the Yankees play the Red Sox. And I know sometimes we overhype it because we love it so much, but I, I hope that's always a thing, and I, I hope it doesn't go away, Michael. All right. Uh, tell me, now you can uh, feel free to disagree. This, it's, it's, okay. all, it's all family, and we're just talking, right? Yeah. I, I think um, I love baseball, and I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that, you know, baseball is losing some viewers, and it just doesn't engage uh, the modern sports fan because it's too long and there's no clock and the games go on and on and there's some antiquated traditions in baseball, you know, unwritten rules, so on and so forth. Yeah. I actually, I still love the game. And I think right now, I think baseball playoffs are still fantastic. I'm just going to say though, last night, and I'm not in the habit of, you know, criticizing other networks. You know, I'm certainly not in the habit of uh, criticizing play-by-play -play guys. I never wanted to be a play-by-play -play guy. I don't, mm -hmm. that's not my skill set. Don't want to do it. But don't you think it might help draw more people to baseball if we stop jumping into the wayback machine? Like last night, I, I love the Red Sox and love watching Red Sox Yankees games. But you know, uh, back to 1949, hey, last time, you know, Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, they had an interview last night with Bucky Dent. That was from 1978, mm -hmm. like 43 years ago. We're still talking about this stuff. Is this a way to draw? Look at this. Look at okay. even on Brother from Another, they're showing stuff from the 1970s. Look at that. 19, it's everywhere. 1978. And and you know, look, we, we keep it 100 on this show, so I'm just yeah. gonna tell you the reason, the reason 1978 really triggers me in a lot of ways. And it wasn't because of a one-game playoff. I wasn't living here. I wasn't living in Boston at the time. It wasn't because of this Yankees Red Sox one game playoff. 1978 in Boston, it really defines those who were here those who know and those who don't know like this is a real thing i don't know if, if it's like this in other cities that you've lived in Ahmed, but yeah because for example there's a there's a mayor's race going on in boston and one of the controversies is one candidate did not grow up here she grew up in chicago went to harvard very capable very bright woman but she didn't grow up here and the other can candidate she grew up here you know, she's from here yeah. She walked these streets, you know, she's been in the neighborhood, you know, so it's like, eh, yeah, 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 you're nice and everything. You know, I know you went to Harvard and everything, but you're not really from here. So it's like that 
I'm from here, not from here kind of thing. Yeah. So 1978 kind of brings out that, that thread, brings out that gene in people like, okay. Because I'll, I'll tell you, one time, like it's sort of like five or six years ago, I've always lived in cold weather cities. So five or six years ago in Boston, there was a snowstorm up to, I mean, it was probably like 20 inches, no exaggeration, 20, 20, 21 inches. So I'm outside and I'm trying to be neighborly, Ahmed. I'm just trying to be a good dude. I'm outside, I'm shoveling. And I see my neighbor who was frankly not that friendly, right? Well, I'm trying to be the better guy. I'm trying to make some small talk with him. I said, man, can you believe this snow? I mean, it's up to my waist, it's 21 inches. He goes, you obviously weren't here in 1978. Blizzard was 78. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You okay, bro. You don't know. All right, you don't we're good. Know. We don't need that. You I don't want to hear about 78 anymore with snowstorms, with one game playoffs. I don't want to hear about Bucky Dent. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Yeah, you know it's what's, bad for yeah. baseball. What do you think? You know what's funny about that is there's like, kind of like a connection between what you're talking about there. It's like you're not, you don't know. You're not from here. Like that's a kind of a baseball yeah. fan's mentality with some of these, you know, rule changes. We're try, you know, for all the, the the faults that you think Major League Baseball has, and Rob Manfred has pulled the wrong strings. You, what you cannot say is that him, along with Theo Epstein, who is now with Major League Baseball, they're thinking of ways to make the game. Yeah, more enjoyable, more entertaining. We've seen it in the NFL. They make tweaks yeah. all the time with how they call defensive penalties to make the game as aesthetically pleasing as possible because that's what we want. There's a discussion in the NBA right now. It's like, are there too many three-point shots? Is the game getting boring? Do we need to make rule changes there to bring the game back in equilibrium? So you do see that a little bit from Major League Baseball side, speaking to, you know, is it getting old? Is it getting antiquated? Let's try to talk about yeah. and think about some new rules here. But you do have that pushback from like the guy who wanted to tell you about the snowstorm back in the day of like, you're not a true baseball fan. If you, if you want to run around second base in extra innings, which I don't know if you like or don't like, I personally thought it was kind of interesting and added some drama to the late innings. Um, but if you like that, then you're not a true baseball fan. So there's a little push and pull going on with baseball right now. I think you're right. There's a segment of fans that just want to go to the future, advance the game. This is Let's a game go. of yeah. now, and we don't need to be tied to the past anymore. But a significant number of baseball fans, though, Michael, want to be tied to the past. This is what they love about baseball, is that they feel like it's unchanged. It's, it's the same game that it was in 1980 or 1990, which is not. It's a little different. They not. play it differently now. Right. Um, but I think that's the, that's the push-pull here. I'm of the side, Michael, like I'm with you. Like, let's advance the game. And there's a topic, too, that, that kind of caught my eye. Um, Cespedes Family Barbecue. Do you, do you follow them on Twitter? Have you heard of them? Do you know them? They've been around for a long time. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, it's good. Oh, teach me something. Here they're we go. They're a couple, a couple of uh, young guys, although they're, they're older, older now, and I think they're working over at Fox. But they tweeted out something about, about a NIT baseball tournament. And we've heard sport, uh, sports talk about in-season tournaments and trying to, like the NBA, Adam Silver has talked about a, uh, like a meaningful in-season tournament to run in parallel to the NBA regular season. we got to ask some of our guests on that because I'm kind of curious if that is ever going to come to fruition. But what they just kind of mockingly put on their Twitter feed was what the NIT tournament would look like for Major League Baseball. So if you were to take the teams that just missed out on making okay. the playoffs – this would be the oh. NIT. So they're the team, you know, the A's just missed oh. out, the Angels, the Rockies. Okay. You, know, you got a bunch of teams nah. here that just missed out. No. And they get their, no. they get their, you know, I hear I hear a lot of no's here. But imagine this. No. Imagine no. if you do that. No. Say this is I'm not listening. a series. No, hold on. Say this is not a series. Just <laughs> one game. I'm trying to convince you. I'm working really hard here. And the winner I'm, I'm, gets the I'm number listening. one pick. The winner gets yes. the number one pick. Okay, now you can go. The, the number one pick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one pick, what, in the draft? Yeah, in the draft. Why, Why not? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait We're a talking minute. about advancing so, the game out of the box. Oh, think out bro, of the box. No, bro, bro, come on. That's come two on. out of the box. All right, first of all, <laughs> this is, it's, no, it's not even two out of the box. I'm going to tell you what this is. I'm going to tell you what this idea is. Yeah. You know what this will lead to? Yeah. Now, we're trying to get baseball, at, well, some people are, because I, I guess I just like the, I just get lost in my thoughts watching baseball. So I like yeah. the up the upbeat sports and, and, and action like basketball. You just know that game has got a clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Halftime, 
fourth quarter, it's going to go fast. I'll be home at this time, unless it goes to overtime or double overtime, unlikely. Yeah. So I like that. I like the pace of basketball. I like the pace of football. No, it's going to be three hours, okay? Yeah. There it is. Three hours. TV. Baseball, that unwieldy, unpredictable, I like it. Most people don't, I know, at this age. They don't like it. But we're trying to get it. You're trying to speed up the game? You already had 162. I'm supposed to reward you. You were 80 and 82. You were 88 and 74. You didn't make the playoffs. You had 162 game sample size. You weren't good enough. I already got the answers. I don't need to know. Like the NIT, old school. All right. It's 30 games. It's yeah. maybe 35 in college basketball. So maybe you got some bad breaks. You didn't get any bad breaks over 162 games. I already know. I don't want to see you in the playoffs. I saw you for 162, and I'm glad your season's over. Players want the season over. Everybody's done. You know, th- this, wasn't, wasn't, me, this wasn't even my this wasn't even my idea. This was Cess- oh, Cespedes' oh, so family barbecue. <laughs> so it's like, now, I don't even know. Now what you're they trying were. to distance. They. <laughs> oh, see. No, the no, funny no. thing is, they just threw you it out it. there. They, they weren't even being serious about it. They just threw it out there as like a fun, like here's who would be in the NIT uh, tournament. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.